Welcome to part six of the CB750 restoration and in this one we pull the top end off the engine and have a good look. Now I spoke to a mate of mine, Dave Raymakers, he's a very experienced motorcyclist and he sort of reaffirmed what I thought already, it'd be criminal to restore the top end and not look underneath. So we're going to, I guess in the next uh, chapter after this, split the cases, have a good look and see what we've got. So of course that way we can have a good bike and have confidence in it too. There is a problem I've got with bearings and I've seen it, I think I mentioned this before, um, in some of the older English engines I've overhauled, uh, where the bearings actually start to shale. Um, uh, they, the cam bearings on the Cleveland 351 I did, did the same thing, but it didn't cause any damage. But I have seen the big end ones go and flog the crank out. So look, the the bike's done 18,000 miles, it isn't much, but it's sat for an awfully long time. Oil's contaminated badly. Uh, very black like diesel oil and so there's a good chance that it's um, it's going to wreak havoc with the bearings. They might look alright when we pull them out. Um, spoke to a guy from a shop and he deals with single overhead cam stuff. He said he's never had a problem with that and he has put them back in. Um, I don't want to do that. I just don't want to do it. I want to have full confidence that this is going to be a cracker because there's always that unknown sort of variable if you go putting old parts back in. Um, Cam chain, pistons probably, rings, full gasket seals and bearings. I reckon that might do it. Of course we're not going to know until we separate the case because there could be other things in there as well but we need to know without any shadow of doubt. So hope you enjoy. Now I've released this one straight after the old one because there was, um, I did about, I did a whole lot of filming. I spent a whole day. Um, it's the beginning of school holidays so I've got a little bit of time. I've got to get into a heap of work on the house, got to paint the hall and do all that sort of stuff. So there won't be any videos for a little while after this, but well, after the next one, I'll split the cases. I'll have some time to do that, but then I've got to do some work on the house. So there won't be that much time. Um, oh, what was I going to say? So I ended up with a whole lot of footage on stripping the bike and then getting into the engine, but I've decided to do that in two videos just because there's a lot of content on the engine. Um, stuff about removing cylinder heads and the, and the sort of the jugs or the barrels if you like uh, which were quite stuck and I didn't want to damage fins or anything like that so I have gone into a lot of detail with that sort of thing as well uh, which has been a bit time consuming so it's meant that I've had to bring this one out um, sort of straight off the back of the, the bike stripping one as well but it, look it's worth looking at if you're interested in these sorts of bikes or if you're going to restore one as well so hope you enjoy. Well here goes nothing so We'll start taking these bits and pieces off. I'm only going to take the top end off on this bench. It's not really suited terribly well to rebuilding an engine because it's too small, but I can take these parts off and uh, sort of see where it leaves us. There's an O-ring there. Oh, that goes in there. Um, spoke to a friend of mine who's also a mechanic, Dave Raymakers, who they're very good friends among the Raymakers. I've known them for 30 odd years. And I was talking to him, trying to talk myself into not having to take, split the cases. And he, he sort of reaffirmed what I already knew. I can't see what I'm doing. And said, look, why would you rebuild it? Only to have to pull it apart again in the future. And I thought, you know what? You're right. So this is going to turn into a full job. Um, just because I've seen Japanese, well not so much Japanese, so British engines that have sat for a long time and the bearings actually become affected and begin to shale. I'm just going to do a crisscross thing here. I've already loosened these. And of course you'll start and you'll get oil pressure and everything seems fine and 500 miles down the road you start getting knocking and all this sort of stuff and it just isn't worth that risk. I think I've got them all out now, there's about 30 of them. Oh, here we go. That looks lovely. That looks really good. So I can pull all this stuff out, check the cams, or well, the cam, there's only one of them. It doesn't look too bad though. I mean, from what I can see so far, it's not, there's not that much to it, but um, anyway, yeah, not bad. Looking at this, the cam chain appears loose. I've backed this um, tensioner right off. that should flick out and it just seems awfully loose 
So it might be a good time to um, change the cam chain as well. The timing chain. I've got that right out, really backed off. That should have come out. And I can't see in there because of the position of the engine whether or not that's cool. I don't know if you can see down here. I'm just taking these exhaust studs out. Normally I just bang a vice grip around them and spin them out, but I don't want to damage fins. I'm paranoid about doing that. So I've just sort of oh that's failed. I've just sort of locked two nuts together. Um just to get them off. It seems to be that they're reasonably difficult to remove. Here we go. It was pointed out by somebody who watched me take took watch me take the engine out and um, they were hitting the frame so I think we'll just extract them all like that. I just thought it was pertinent while well, I've got it up here to get those out. And of course I can bag those and we can reuse them. There's nothing wrong with those. Right, so I've marked these to take them off. I've just put little witness marks on them. This is all going to come off anyway. It's, look, it's probably a waste of time. That looks like a Z, but it says sort of three and four, so that's one, obviously. Um, really stiff, though, now. How can we got some stacks um, revitalized through Ichiban Moto, who um, is a YouTuber. But of course he cuts half inch steel stock with nail scissors, it's all a big joke. And I don't know the proper way whether to get new ones. I've, I've read on the forums that these, you, you can get really bad quality ones and the original ones are better. So of course I'd soon stay with the original stuff. But not wanting to pry against the cylinders, they, they're really quite stiff. Um, I don't know whether you use a heat gun to sort of soften them to get them off. Don't know, I'll just leave them for now. So I'm gonna pop the cam out. And we've got to turn the engine to get it onto the base circle. As you can see, this one here, I've got a little point. Oh, here we go. That's coming up onto the rock, onto the lobe, and so is that one. So is this one, and so forth. So I want to just rotate it to get it off those or out of that position before I start taking those out. So um, I'll just turn him around, keep an eye on it. That one's cool. That one's, oh, that's right on the top. Okay, so that's coming up. That's been, and so is that. So they're all sort of, I might go a little tiny bit more. Just to get it, it's not quite on the base circle, but it's on the side of the lobe. So that should be safe to take the side out now. And we have to keep these labelled and measure them and do all this sort of other stuff. So it starts by taking these out and then of course that one and then we can re what do you call it? remove the rocker shaft and those arms will come off. And they need to get bagged um, separately. So intricate. When you're used to doing 351 Ford engines, these things are little bubbies. Look at them. And that should somehow withdraw. Uh -huh. Sneaky little bugger. Here we go. We'll measure that. And then pop those two little guys out, leave them in order so that I can put them back in the correct order. It's vital we do that because they'll be sort of worn into the camshaft in a certain way. Still in pretty good shape by the look of it. We can just mark it up. I think 11.94 is the minimum. That is right on 12. So that's cool. Right on. That's cool. Excellent. So I'll just put a bit of paper around that, put it in a bag with these two bolts, and then we just continue that for here, here, and here. Ooh, that was too tough. 
Right. So I've got a, here's a lot of bags this way. One and two exhaust rocker, one exhaust, two exhaust, all good. We can't screw that up when we put it together now, hopefully. So we just keep going. And I'm just using a little ring spanner. These aren't terribly tight. Um, I'm just going to do it all again. I must say, so far, and I'm really apprehensive about the insides of this thing, but so far, this thing's been delightful in terms of its um, condition. It's just really peachy so far. Oh, that one's a bit stiff. Jeez, did I just speak? I shouldn't have spoken so soon. No, it's all good. That should come out. The thing I like about this is a dirty bit of rag, but it is. You just wipe and it's just like brand new under there. It's definitely genuine 18,000 miles, this thing. There's no way this thing's been around the clock. And even the hardening, like all of the shafts have come out right on spec at 12 millimetres, where the minimum is like 11.94. Um, and it's nice to see fresh oil being pumped up here too because it wasn't cranking over for very long at all. Um, and so the lubrication system looks to be quite healthy, but even the faces of the um, of the rockers are absolutely gorgeous. There's nothing wrong with that at all. It's just mild marking where the cam's been, but it's absolutely indistinguishable what by feel. And you can normally feel things like that. Mechanics always feel well with their hands. But... I sort of bagged everything really, really individually, just so that I know without any shadow of doubt exactly where it goes in. So it is something I'm fussy about because each lobe will wear into each um, rocker arm, and each you know bearing journal needs to be numbered before it's put back. Um, and I don't think they are numbered. I think they're just all. So I'll bag them separately, just so I know. That's one, two, three, four. It's it's that easy. The chain is stretched though, and it is only a very small chain, but that chain is stretched, so we'll pop a new chain on. So I've just sort of cracked the, um, that needs a thinner socket. Hang on a second, I have to go and get a thinner socket. Charlie, be careful. If I was assembling it, I wouldn't be so chatty though. Hang on. Okay. Well, I might need some. No, it's all right. Hi. Bye bye. I can't find my half three hour drive adapter, so. I've got to use quarter to get it off. I'm just going to crack these. These ones here are close. Um, so I can just sort of loosen it, take these caps off and have a bit of a look. And I just want to have a really, really good look, see? Oh man, really? Really? Did I just drop that? Don't let me forget it's in there. That's what happens when people come out. All the kids are coming out now, so I'm going to drop tools because otherwise I'm going to start breaking stuff. I always lose concentration when the children come out. There we go. It's got to be lifted square. All right. Perfect. It is absolutely flawless. So I'm just going to pop that down like that. I'm going to mark these. I might actually clean them up in thinner and just tape around them. And that would be 4F, the front. I don't want this to go the wrong way because they look perfectly symmetrical. So before I go any further, I'm going to mark them. The message from mum, she's like, oh, why is Charlie not happy? And I'm like, what do you mean? He was, we had a great conversation a second ago. We're going to watch. Here are the can bearings. I've labelled each one, one F, two F, all this sort of stuff, three F and four F, so I can wrap them and bag them individually. I'm just going to pop this camshaft out now. Right here, so I'll just turn it around again. Oh crap, this thing's leaking. Where's it leaking from? It's pouring oil out from somewhere. Alright, oh, I'm turning the engine over and the oil pump. Damn, alright. Okay, change of plan, so I'm just going to mop So are you up. teaching them on what not to do? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> right, I'm going to turn this over. I've got the tensioner out. It's really, really slack. Hang on a sec. There we go. We don't want these to drop in, but at the end of the day, if they drop in, I don't care because I'm going to pull it all apart anyway. 
and camshaft should just lift out. I think I'll derail. I wonder if I can pull that to the side and derail the sprocket. Yeah, I reckon I can. There we go. Lovely. Right, so we'll just <laughs> pop the cam out there. There should be a little cutout. I should take the sprocket out first, don't I? And the sprocket's got little cutouts that go around the lobes. Put that down and then pull this little guy out. Oh, I just don't want to damage it. I'm not doing this very well. I'm going to hold this fish that out with a bit of wine. Right, camshaft. Now we're going to measure this thing. I'm just going to wipe it down a bit. Wrap him in newspaper. Lobes. There's a little bit of hardening there. That's. I mean, it is a used engine. But there's a spec, and I've written it down so I can mic this to make sure that it's all good. But I tell you what, at the minute, it does look very, very good. Because it's not, um, there's nothing rounded about it. It actually looks in really good shape. The bearings for the camshaft and the cylinder head are fine. There's a bit of discoloration there, but I think that's just old oil. That's that old black oil. And the new stuff's been coming through beautifully, so that's cool. Um, when I get more experience with this... I probably won't be so overzealous about marking everything. Um, not a bad idea with an engine to do that. Particularly in this case, I mean, I can pull a V8 apart without even thinking twice about it, but this thing's a bit foreign, a bit new to me. So here we go. There's those gaskets. And I don't know if the set will come with those, but um, I can... Um, there's the O-rings too. There's these little oil ring jet things here, which I've got to take out and salvage. So this is... Oh, I can't get it with my finger now. I just want to put all this stuff away separately. And it's also locating down there as well. So it's starting to rain. So I can put that away, wrap it up in newspaper, put it away. I know exactly which one it is. Um, let's put that behind there for now. And there's a couple of things to be careful of. There's another one of those dowels. That one's fairly solidly in. And of course, we've got these little jets, these things here. Very small orifice in them. Um, and those things cannot be afforded to be lost because we will do all sorts of damage if they're not reinstalled. These little guys here, just make sure they're nice and free, the hole's clear. So all this stuff has to be meticulously bagged. So I think I'll start by taking that out and I'll just label all this and bag it up now. Oh, the rain's just increased. I think there's another one here. Or oh, maybe there's not. It's supposed to be... Where's the other one? One there. I better look in the manual. I thought there was one on that side too. Perhaps it's only these two inner ones here, I'm not sure. Need to check that out though. Right, so that leaves us here. We've got a couple of things that are hard to get out. That there has been very difficult to get out. And also there's one exhaust stud which I can't get out either. Ooh. Um, oh, so is that. <laughs> it, oh no, I got it, I got that one. Anyway, so I'll have to bag that. So, time for a cup of tea. That little bit in there has gone cold and it's sort of empty, so I'm going to get a cup of tea and we'll take the head off. And I'm really curious about what's going on with the head. This will answer a few questions. Our exhaust valves don't appear to be closing and I think what may have happened is it's been turned over every now and then, like a couple of years sort of thing, and where the valve um, stems rusted, it sort of got into the guide and stopped it closing. I think it's going to be something along those lines anyway. But we've got to take these off in sequence. Um, particularly with alloy heads, cast aren't as important. But you would never ever take a head off an alloy headed engine if it was warm. You always wait till they're completely cool. And of course this thing hasn't run since friggin' 1988. I don't think, I don't know. But it's certainly cooled down. 
So I've got one sandwich bag left for head hardware, and then that is toast. I need to buy a new pack of sandwich bags. They're $3 for a 50 or something, they're nothing, so always a really, really good thing to get. Right, well it's time to get off the engine. And there's these little 6mm ones, I've cracked that one. I haven't got my, I can't find my um, 3 8 adapter, which is a huge pain. And I'm just going to crack these. There's another one in there, somewhere, there it is. And the rest of them are quite easy, they're um, 12mm. I might just get a shorter extension. Instead of taking these off in sequence, uh, this, this one next. Is that one I'm done? Yep. Ah, what have we got? 16, 17. 18. Is that what I'm done? Where's 19? Oh, there it is. 19. <sighs> 20. 21. And 22. So I'll just go around now and I can sort of take these ones out again. Not a bad thing when you're doing a job like this, just to have a mechanics magnet around, just to pop the bolts out. They say two to three stages, I've done two. Um, because when you crack it the first time, they're loose, you know, they're, they're sort of, it's hard to sort of um, get them up in three. And all the, the nuts will have washers underneath them. These outer ones that go sort of where the weather can get to them, and the, these sort of four front ones, going to pop a bit, you can see a tiny bit of corrosion around them. I'll pop some penetrating lube down there. And um, before I lift the head off, just in case they hang onto the studs a little bit, but it's important to understand that even these outside ones here, being an alloy head, of course, have a washer. And that will have a way of locking onto the stud if you go to lift the head off um, without sort of taking them out. Sometimes these ones will come off with the nut. This one did, I just kicked it down with my finger and just grab them and you can just rotate them off like that and they'll come off nice and easily. There is one washer. I'm just gonna squirt down there. This one here, I couldn't dig out, it sort of jammed itself on. So I need to sort of think about that. I'm just really not interested in breaking this. Not at all. So I'm trying to get this head off and it's jammed pretty solid. All the bolts under those rubber, can we see down there? Oh, it's this one. All the bolts under these rubber, anyway, there's, there's bolts down there, it's behind the camera. They're all out. Well, you can see that one there. Um, everything's out, ready to go, and I can't move the head. Now, the only thing I can see, or the only place I can see, which might be safe to drive something into, is in that little area there, and I've just put a in this part here, I've just put a screwdriver in there. It's the only place 
that I reckon you could probably drive something in without cracking one of these fins. They are monumentally brittle. This little train. Okay, got movement there. Let's try this side. Okay, there's movement there too. Um, it doesn't mean the front of it isn't stuck though. And there's no way I can see at the front, which is going to be safe to sort of lever on. I just don't want to damage this thing. Which dropping it on the floor would cause a lot of damage. But... So I think it's just one of those jobs that you have to be exceedingly patient. Oh, there is a spot there below a boss. Oh, there is a spot. Hang on, I'll just see. We don't want to bend. Here we go. Ah, got it, baby. Yep. Cool. I'll show you what I did. I've got to coordinate a light and a screw stick. Just in there. Now, going right up to the cylinder block, I've just pulled up. And you can see it's released. And it doesn't jeopardize, it doesn't seem to jeopardize the fins at all. So let's take this head off now. We're wobbling, but we're not coming. Come on, off you get. Might be a good time to get that, um, that washer I couldn't get off. Uh-huh, gotcha. All right, let's go for round two. Oh, gosh. Some wooden wedges would be really good. Actually, I've got an idea. This is a Volvo service tool. It's made for getting like bits of dash trim and so forth. It's called a bone. Um, what I can maybe do is drive it under and then watch it fall out. It's just, it's better to toil with it a bit than damage stuff, you know, in haste. Taking things out in haste. Um, I just want to see where about it's hung up. Oh, I can see. It's hung up at the front. It's actually really easy to see when you sort of look along it. There we go. Oh. Bloody hell. <laughs> well, I certainly know to make sticky gaskets, Honda. This could be one of those asbestos ones too. It's just monumentally strong plastic. You can sort of, I'm talking about this thing, you can sort of drive it in and um, knock it in with a hammer. There's a bit over the side here. And um, that might be ready. God damn, come on. <coughs> I think I've got it. Wonderful. What's the story of these bloody valves? I'll take a better look in a minute. I don't think they're bad, I think it was bad as I thought. Let's have a look at this. It's pretty messy in there. Well, just before I bring the head up, pardon my really dirty mitts, um, I've got a, my micrometer, I've got the right run micrometer here, and I'm on holiday at the moment, so I can't get into work. The journals, um, 3586 for the intake, and 3536 for exhaust, according to something I've written down out of the manual. So, I can't remember which is which. 3539, so I've got a bit of wear there. So 3529. That's not too bad. Oops. 3527, they're all fairly consistent. 3529. So it looks to be 3571. Oh no, 3533. So they're all fairly consistent. Now this is a K8. Apparently these use a smogger cam. They're not as good as the um, early ones. But there is there is some wear on it. But around 353 between you know intake and exhaust, even though according to spec the intake's supposed to be a little bit bigger. So if you're a fan of Big Clive, he does a lot of electronic sorts of projects. He uses a spudger, which is what this is. It's a very fine sort of spring steel prying tool, I guess. It's, I think it's designed, um, 
for mobile phones and iPads and stuff like that and to get the screens out. So he uses it to disassemble um, all sorts of electronic kit, the sort of stuff he pulls apart. I find that, and, and I've been using this for years. I've had that for probably 30 years or just under. Um, as I said, it's a Volvo service tool. And we use it on Nissans and all sorts of things just to get the dashes out because they're all sort of clipped in. They have concealed screws and that sort of thing. But for the most part, the surrounds and all that sort of stuff are clipped in. You can just sort of go around and jimmy them off with this and it won't leave any marks on the sort of padded dashes where a screwdriver is detrimental to them. So if you ever see one of these, its nickname is a bone. Though. We always used to call it a bone. I'm not really sure what its proper name is, but it's absolutely brilliant. And I used it with a hammer on the back to pry the head apart with that point and really really good invaluable right we can see i've just left some rags in there just to mop up some of the oil i put in there originally when i first got the bike um or in the first video that one's mopped out nicely um this looks terrible absolutely terrible but you can't really see because there's just so much crud in there um hardly surprising doesn't um reflect on its mileage that will be determined by the wear but um just the fact that it's so carbon up, you couldn't dare put this back together and run it the way it is. It's just too dangerous to do that. Now the thing is, if you scrape the top of pistons and leave this stuff down in the ringlands, on top of the ringlands down the side, um, you stand to do a lot more damage. So I think I've got a light, but we can't really see an awful lot. I think I'll just fish that chain out now. Yeah, come on. Air check, um, good boy. Right, so I'll just leave that lying out there. Got some hope of just rotating the engine just a little bit perhaps. But um, there's a couple of things I want to see. I'm just going to hold that up. Hey, hold that up while I do it. And get it right to the top. What I'm interested in, which I'd be amazed if this thing's ever been bored, but... Um, I don't think I'm going to bother doing it this way. It'll just give me some idea. I don't think it's been bored. Look, I'm just wasting my time doing that. But oh, that looks unbelievable. It's um. I'll just get the camera in a second. My God, look at this. Hang on, I've got to show you this. I've still got all the cross hatching. I mean, it is absolutely beautiful. This engine. Look at that. That's the original Honda cross hatching. So this really hasn't done much work. The bores are dirty. I'm going to hone it. But look, it's it's one of those things where um, I better look around there while before I wind it up. Where if I didn't freshen this with new rings and all that sort of stuff, um, you would start to damage it. You really could do some damage with the old bearings and just all this muck in there, you know what I mean? So, I think it's prudent to overhaul. It's a bit of scratching there. Not enough to bore it though. And of course, there's no lip. I think this bike's going to be a real keeper. I really do. When this is all cleaned up and recode, I don't even think I need to do any machine work. I think this is just going to strictly be rings and bearings, new gaskets and seals, and I reckon we're going to have a cracking bike. So I'm just going to hold that up, have a look at the centre too, and it's more of the same. It's more of the same. It's a little bit of scoring though, I'm just hoping. I might not whether to put pistons in it or not, because the pistons will be marked on the skirt. Um, that's probably from being too hot. But I'll tell you what, <laughs> next to what this thing could have been, this is peachy. Absolutely peachy. I'm really happy. I'm absolutely stoked with that. It's great. Right, so we'll pop these dowels out, locating dowels. And um, try and get the cylinder block off. They call them jugs. I always call them barrels. I've still got to get a, a raft of parts, so we're doing lots and lots of videos at the moment. But it will slow down. Oh man, that's quite a big one. Yeah, come on. There we go. Let's put those over there for a moment. There. Cool. Let's 
stay away from the fins. We don't want any damage if we can avoid it. I'll go and get that bone again and start wedging it out. Well, it looks so far. It's all good. I'm worried about the um, crankshaft and stuff, but once that, I reckon um, if that all works whoops, out, we should be on the home straight. Bugger. This is quite tough. This thing's um, imperative that we get it square. That we take it off square. Um, because it's positioned. Oh my god. This is worse than a bloody head. One guy I was reading about on the forum ended up taking his cylinder block and um, thing off together. Um, the cylinders and the thing, what do you call it? The head together. It's going to go there. Alright, so I think it's all good at the front. Oh god, you got it so square. And the other thing is, if it was on the ground, if it was on the ground, it'd be much easier because I haven't got the leverage here on the bench. This is why I'm going to stick it on the ground later. Might even be easier just getting a small bit of wood under there. Two bits of wood. No. No, 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 no. It's not far. Tell you what, getting these rings on is going to be a mongrel. But I'm going to rethink this and really be careful when I put it on. The middle two are out. Ta-da. Right. Yeah, I might put pistons in it. These things look like they've been striking. There is um, some piston damage. You'll probably get away with putting them back. But, um... Yeah, just don't know if I want to. I might put new pistons in. A bit of scratching. Hang on. A bit of scratching there. This one is actually rough. So we'll see how that bore hones out. But that piston, I wouldn't put that back in an engine. I think um, I wouldn't mind putting some new pistons in. I don't think they're terribly expensive for these. But yeah. There you go. So I think we'll leave it there for now. Um, thank you to everybody for your support. I've been getting good um, good amount of views on this. I thought people would drop me like a hotcake the moment I pulled a motorbike out because this is essentially a car channel. But um, all things mechanical are good, particularly old school. So we'll continue with parts examination and pull the pistons off, cases off, clutch off, all that sort of stuff, split the case, whatever we need to do, we'll do. Uh, but for the meantime, drive safely, enjoy your classic, and I'll see you later.